me, Ned! Get the f off! Too much pressure! In a world where the balance of power is constantly tested, some individuals mistakenly believe they can bully the police without facing any repercussions. No! No! You just call somebody, bro! I need your data birth. What do you want from me? Your data birth. Man, leave me alone. Nicole! Hey, I'm talking to you too. This misguided sense of entitlement often leads to confrontations that escalate quickly, revealing the harsh realities of the law. Oh my god! I don't care! You f your officers say shit! I'll f your shoes right there, dumbass. He's under arrest for domestic battery, domestic assault, and resisting What are you talking arrest. about? Join us as we dive into the stories of those who thought they could challenge authority and the unexpected consequences that followed. You kept me from doing my job. Why would you that's do that? A, that's close. Why would you I'm put me in jail for in disorderly conduct? Get in the cruiser! Officers were dispatched after a frantic call from the local department of motor vehicles. A woman had stormed in, irate over the seemingly endless wait time. When informed that an employee was on break and she'd have to wait 30 to 45 minutes for her ID, she erupted in fury, verbally assaulting the staff. What unfolded next was nothing short of astonishing. Um, because at minimum, this is disorderly conduct. Yeah. Okay. Purple pants, blue hoodie. White wrap. After gathering the victim's statement, the officer secured a detailed description of the suspect. The victim mentioned that the last sighting of the suspect was heading toward the shopping plaza. However, little did the officer know that the case was about to take an unexpected and wild turn. Hey man, I got to the end. Yep. Hello. Yep. Going into the testing center, yelling at everybody. Where? The testing center. Oh, I, I apologize. You don't have your ID? No, I'm trying to get my ID. Okay, Where, do you have it on you? No, I don't have an ID. All right, what's your first and last? When the police arrived, they were likely expecting to defuse the situation, but instead, they encountered a wall of resistance. The woman refused to provide her identification, a move that not only complicated her situation, but also indicated a blatant disregard for law enforcement protocols. How do you spell your, your last name? Oh, God, please just tell me to leave it alone. I'll be gone. I'm gone. No, I'm writing you a summons for disorderly conduct. What is your, how do you spell your last name? Why do you give me a summons, man? A-D-E-R. T-H-Y. All right, what's your date of birth? Why? Uh, that's not disorderly conduct. What's your date of birth? I don't know. Man, What whoa. is your date of birth? Oh, my God. Can you please not write me a summons? Nicole, what's your date of birth? I don't have, an, I don't have, I don't, I don't have my fucking information, man. Why did they call the cops? Hey, now, can I have another unit? What'd I do? Uh, Nicole, man. I will arrest you. What do you, you want? You, you just call somebody, bro. I need your data birth. What do you want from me? Your data birth. Man, leave me alone. Nicole. <laughs> You're me. You're an awful person. But tell me the jail. God damn it. <laughs> Are you injured? Oh, whoa. Stand up. Oh, don't touch me. The evil vendors are after me. Come on, stand up. What? Stand up. What? I'm gonna get what? Stand up. Just tell me what you want. Don't pull me like stand that. Because you're laying in the parking lot. He wants to put me in jail. What? Let's act like an oh adult my and stand God. up. Why are y'all doing this to me? This is so fucking Stop crazy. Stop hurting my arm! Come on, you gotta stand up. Oh my god! This guy out of jail, bro! Fresh out of prison, it seems her personality hasn't gotten any more humble. She appears to be on her way to reclaim her room, still causing a ruckus in public and shouting like a large child. Christ! Ah! Come on, stand up. Why'd you just stand up? I just told you that. <laughs> Come on. Oh, Jesus! Back in jail. What? Look at this. Don't smoke my cigarette. You're a mean person, man. Somebody cuss the little crack out. You get mad and call the cops. Why you get you doing me like this, man? Yeah. I'm gonna get high when I get out. 
I can't get no money. I can't do anything. Ridiculous, man. Every fucking time I get a chance, I'm back in the motherfucking wagon. Alright, let's pick her up, bro. Where are you? Where am I, where am I going? Right though? there. You're gonna go see the back of that piece, what? Oh my god. Oh my god. Don't touch me. Man, you just fucking stop toe up, man. I just got out of jail. Get in there. Where are you taking me? To the jail. To jail? For real? Yeah, get in there. For what? For running from me. So did you, why unit. did you call another unit? Get in there. I don't want to have to push in. Come on. No, man. I'm not, going to I'm not going to jail right now, man. Don't f touch me, man. Get in the don't you touch me. Yeah, I, yeah, I will yeah, go to yeah, prison yeah. for your ass. You never tell me why I'm going to uh, jail. I just told you for running from me. Man, you wouldn't you didn't even say I was arrested. You kept me from doing my job. Why would you that's do called, that? That's called striking. Why would you I'm put me in jail for disorderly conduct? Get in the cruiser. As the drama escalates, the woman decides to engage in a physical struggle with the officers. You'd think she was auditioning for a role in an action movie, but police are not extras. They're trained to handle this kind of situation. And trust me, rolling around on the floor isn't going to earn you any Oscar nominations, just a few extra charges. Why would you put me in jail for this order kind of man? I don't want to go to jail. I didn't do anything. I did not do anything. I want to go. I'm not going to jail for nothing. Don't fucking touch me. Don't fucking touch me. Don't touch me, man. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. I'm so sick of this shit. I'm going to jail for nothing again. I'm going to jail for nothing again, bro. No! Now let me f*** that man! Let me smell my scenery! Let me go smell my fucking scenery! Love me! Nicole, can you act like an adult? No, you shouldn't have done nothing to me! This is f***ing dead! Nicole. We'll be here all f***ing day! Get in the cruiser. No! No! I'm in that bitch all the time! I wanna get hurt! I don't care! I wanna go, no! I go nowhere! No, I ain't do shit! Monkey! Fuck your monkey, bitch! Monkey! I ain't paid no damn wrong! Y'all say I'm not going down to no police station! Don't walk, get my power with her. And you will go to fucking jail, you f***ing Nice and easy, stand up. Get off of me, man. What, man? That's all y'all had to do! Just ten minutes later, the police took the noisy woman to the station where we continued to witness her impatience and lack of cooperation, which was hard to believe. Her behavior resembled that of a big child throwing a tantrum. Notably, she committed a rude act by spitting at the police. Perhaps she thought she was participating in a rudeness Olympic event. It's quite perplexing, isn't it? Is a fucking shoe right there, dumbass. Oh, damn, man. Oh, my God. Why y'all arresting me for the stupid shit? Damn! I gotta sit in there for how long? I'm not sure what your charges are. I don't fucking care about my charges, man. We can, maybe you can find out if it's misdemeanor stuff. Oh my god! I'm really going to bar in the jail, bro. Hang on. Okay. This is sad. I want to explain the pr process to you. Oh my god! This is so sad, though. I know. But do you want to get out at some point? Hell yeah! Great. I told you to leave me alone. Do we know what charges there are, old man. What's that? M2? Where's DLC? Alright, M2. What's the fing DLC, man? man? man, man. For what? You're not going anywhere until you call me. I out. left out the building like the f man told me to, man. Alright, all right. we're gonna take cuffs off one at a time, but we gotta put these on you, okay? I'm not putting on my cuffs on, man. Yes, ma'am, we are. For that's what? our that's our policy. McCall, if you can grab that arm. I well, this is so good. Don't touch me, black man. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Get off my arm. Hang on, nice and easy. Get off my whoa, whoa, whoa. See, now you gotta go right here. Ass off me, man. I don't give a man. I told you to leave me the alone. I told you. Y'all keep putting me in this fucking hole. Every time I get a fucking chance. Too much pressure. Look, they're stupid. I'm going to take her out. Alright. Now you're not gonna spit on these officers, are you? Let, let me ask something. Would, um, you like to put your, would you like to put your shoes on? Yeah. Okay. What we're gonna do, you be calm. Okay? We'll let you put your shoes on. Deal. Okay. Right. Go ahead and stand up for me, ma'am. Can you go ahead and put your hands behind your back? Eventually, our leading lady finds herself handcuffed and on the receiving end of multiple charges, including assaulting an officer. 
Honestly, who knew a simple trip to the DMV could end with a one-way ticket to jail? It's a perfect reminder that while expressing your frustrations is essential, throwing fists is not the best approach. Remember, resisting arrest is not a trendy new dance move. So, what can we learn from this thrilling escapade? It's simple. Next time you find yourself in a long DMV line, take a deep breath and maybe practice your Zen Yoga. After all, a moment of patience can save you from a lifetime of regret, or in this case, jail time. Emotions, alcohol, and the law collide. Well, in this case, we have Alia Baker, who found herself at the center of a domestic disturbance call that quickly escalated into something much more serious. Stop pulling away from me, you're about please to catch another charge. Me, please, please slow down, please. Alia's night takes a turn for the worse when police respond to a call and find her unresponsive in a truck, following a disturbance reported by neighbors. Instead of just a misunderstanding, it quickly became a situation involving domestic battery, assault, and resisting an officer. Florida law doesn't take domestic violence lightly. Under Florida Statutes 741.29, officers are required to investigate and take action in domestic cases, which explains why they weren't about to let Alia drive off into the night. Was this preventable? Absolutely. But the mix of alcohol and emotions rarely leads to good decisions. I have an unconscious female in the in a truck parked in the driveway to the it's ten four. She looks to be breathing, she's just not responding to me. Hey, sheriff's office, wake up. Right, sir. Dead for if you don't mind. Enter Zach, Alia's boyfriend, who tries to justify her actions, citing her frustration and drinking. Tip for is Alyssa Vickers. Uh, Howdy. What's up, man? Um, How are you doing tonight? Very well. My girlfriend's sitting in the truck. I hope that's okay. She doesn't seem very responsive, man. Um, she was, I was letting her kind of take a, take a breather for a little bit because she was getting a little worked out. But here's the thing. Emotional explanations don't erase legal consequences. With Alia sitting in the driver's seat after drinking, the police had no choice but to intervene. Under Florida's DUI laws, even being in the driver's seat with the keys can lead to an arrest if officers suspect you've been drinking. No amount of reasoning can change the law's stance on drunk driving. Do you think Zach could have handled this better? 1012, what's up, male half? Hey, I brother man, can you leave those keys right there? What's that? Can you leave those keys right there? So she wasn't driving. I was, okay. Know, these are in my pocket. Hold on. We're, we're just going to chill out for a second. She's going to fall out. Dude. All right, baby, go. She hurt her knee tonight. How did you guys find out about her? Was she making noises or something? Okay, uh, somebody came over and was beating on your neighbor's garage. Baby, girl, come on. What in the world's going on? Maybe you drink a few beers. Did someone roofie you or something? Are you okay, baby? Baby, girl. She knows the code to my truck, so she comes and sits out here when... I mean, I saw you pull the keys out of the ignition. Well, no, no, they were in the cup hold right there because I have this lock on my truck right here so that they're prepared okay. when I leave in the morning for work. Hi. Malaysia, baby, can you come inside with me, please? She can't go anywhere right now, brother man. Sir, sir, she, she was in the front seat. She crawled over to the driver's seat. Okay, what the f***? Uh, what? What? Uh, 
What are you saying what for? Uh, baby, he, I'm she's, she's, at, I'm like bitching at and moaning at me. She's, she's drunk, oh, obviously. Oh, oh. Let me call my dad. I'm sorry. Oh. Let me get a lawyer involved. No, she's conscious breathing. You can get a lawyer involved. I don't care. She's uh, had please. access to running vehicle. Yeah, I'm bothering her. And she's drunk. Yeah, yeah, this, is, this is our home. We just moved in a couple of weeks ago. Please, okay, dude. well, she's. I promise you, there was no yeah. chance that she was okay, gonna. Wait, that was. Wait, 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 like, Alasia, can you please be polite to the guy? No, he's. Mama Bear, I, uh, Alasia, Alasia and I are at our house. While the boyfriend showed understanding and cooperation, his girlfriend seemed completely unaware of the concept. She was upset or in the car, but the, I the police basically she called she called over. That. Whenever I showed seat. up, like over and here, guys, like did you request no, me that no, or no? Seeming like he's did you to follow like me on to so being to requested? Do. Like do you want, like no. Alicia, stop talking. Okay, sir, how, talk. sir, we're hey, do that again, you're going to jail. Alicia, what let, me, hey, man. let me take you to bed. She's, she's not free to go, brother man. Sir, Absolutely we're ridiculous. sir, we're home right now. Okay, she, that's she fine. This is over. She's not free to go right now. I'm not saying she's under arrest, but she's not free okay, to go. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Everybody just this? get in. I am please. begging people to what? pay attention to me. It's fed up. We, we got in the Fuck guys. You guys got in a fight. If you want to treat women like a piece of sh treat women like a piece of sh and you sure as sh can too. I don't understand. <laughs> okay. No. He's 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 trying to I'm supposed to kiss people's ass. Because you're nasty, how does that quite make sense? You treat people like and so the woman in your life gets to get shit on? Malaysia, please be quiet. Please Absolutely go. kiss my You men in your whole life, you all just shit on all the women that's ordered to you. We I all want you right to now, feel like the big, strong, powerful man, and we all want to like DUI kiss ass for you. That's not him. Right? Please. In the I literally holder. don't give a don't. You're not free to go. Don't I, make me do this. I don't want to be. You're free not to go. free to go. I just please want. Sit down. I'm sick and tired of this dumb. Sit down, please. I give you guys exactly what you want. Sit I kiss down. your ass. Sit down on the right there on the thing. Come here, come brother. Here. Stop. She's already swiped at you, man. Just stop. Okay. I've literally. Well, you're not free to you. You're not free to go right I've now. I've kissed I'm your ass. I'm asking time. you to sit you got down. Me this whole time. Tired of it. I understand that. As tensions rise, Alia accuses the officers of bullying her, which isn't unusual when people feel cornered by law enforcement. However, resisting arrest never helps your case, especially in Florida, where resisting an officer without violence is a misdemeanor under Florida Statute 843.02. Alia's frustration is understandable, but her resistance only escalated the situation. Is there ever a time when arguing with the police is a good idea? The answer is almost always no. Okay. What the have I done to you? Alasia Baker. I I'm annoyed right now. We got it I've given argument. you exactly what you want. So I give you. The, you guys want to be mean to people. Obviously, it's called are, your job. What? You are under the right? I, I haven't talking. done to anything, Please. anybody. Alicia. I sat here and waited for you to come out and be a nice. I, 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 I crawled know. over here because I'm. To, uh, I know, baby. I'm sorry. That, oh, I'm no, baby. Mom. Oh, I know. I'm it's not, not fair. Bully, baby, you guys are gonna sit here and bully me. No one's bullying you. I don't give a. F I we, do we respect you guys. We had a fun time here tonight. She comes out to my truck and kind of yeah, like lets you see. Yeah, you're not looking up because I don't even know what the. F is. Like you're like staring at the ground. He's you are supposed to be in charge of me. In my humble opinion. You're an adult. You're supposed to be in charge of yourself. Turn you're not conducting yourself you. very well right now. As the argument heats up, her frustration boils over, leading to aggressive gestures toward both the boyfriend and the police officers. Alicia, please breathe and give me a hug. Just breathe and give me a I'm hug. I'm having a tough time right now because I thought that Will you give me a hug, there was supposed to be someone in charge of me. I, I felt like there was supposed here, to be I'm somebody sorry. around. I shouldn't have let her come. She knows the code. Get the f out of my face, dude. Go Alicia, away. Go no, I'm getting very frustrated Alicia, now. You're gonna go to jail. No, I'm getting frustrated now. Baby, please put your zipper up. Zip, pick your zipper up, please. Oh, I'm coming. Come here. Give me a hug. Please give me a hug. No. Please give me a hug. Do not touch me. It's a serious issue with you. Malaysia, please give me a hug. I'm about to have an actual issue with you because I have begged both of you. It doesn't matter with me. It doesn't matter when it's you. Huh? She's, she's harmless. She just likes to go get her peace for a That's little fine. bit. That's fine. Baby, I'm having a serious issue with the fact that I have begged you to treat me nicely. Stop for outside. what? Baby, they don't want to hear this. These are the police. I don't care. The police. That's what I'm saying is get the f out of yeah. my face, Zach. And I don't want to hear from you either. And I'm saying please Baby, I'll go. go. I'll go. I'll go. But okay, so you, go. I need you to stop talking, please. Stop I don't talking. care what you need, Zach. It's not about you. Please, At a here. certain point, Let it is not about you anymore. It is not about what you need. It is about the people who need you to get the
He's away from that me. It is not about what. Ooh, oh, is this big fat yeah, six just foot her man? Mom. Is, her gonna, her is he gonna threaten time. her? Okay. Do they, they I, look I, like they're I, scared that you're gonna threaten me? No, I'm because scared. I don't give a. I'm have you swung them. at me a million times? No, I don't give a. I do not understand how to explain to you Please that when you abuse a woman, how you feel anymore. If you're gonna be nasty to me and hurt me and demise me, and really why do you think that I'm supposed to like respect yeah, you enough? So. Can you talk to your mom? Listen no, to my mom. Listen to my mom. Listen to my get mom. out of my face! Please, stop. Alicia, please no. Alicia, please listen to my mom. Please, sir, you. please no, sir. She she swipes at me often. Please, no. Nope. Alicia, please listen to my mom. Back up. Yeah, I do. Alicia, please. She's not just hitting him frequently. She's elevated it to full-on domestic violence. My friend. It seems like holding on to this girlfriend has gone way beyond the boundaries of a healthy relationship. Under the lens of domestic violence law, specifically section 741.28 in Florida, do those love taps still count as affection, or have they crossed into the realm of criminal offense? Not only love, but also handcuffs might be waiting for him if she keeps expressing her feelings this way. I'm not gonna... yeah. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> I genuinely am taking this all the way to court because I did not can do I anything to you. Can I stop. Please. Please. stop. Okay. That's... Hey, let me stop. Can you stop being nasty with Please me? Stop. <gasps> what the f People, I hate white people and I hate you guys. What the f I'm about to piss myself because you want to you're not okay. gonna do anything. Come on. <laughs> stop pulling away from me. You're about please to catch another charge. Please, please slow down. Please, please slow down, sir. I'm not. This is absolutely insane. That's fine. Sit in the car, please. Dude. Sit in the car. Dude. Sit in the car. What the? Sit in the car. I'm literally not putting up any fights you're, against you guys. You are. Get no, I'm court. not. Look me in you're my not, eyes and tell me. I'm not putting up a fight against you. It's under arrest for domestic battery, domestic assault, and resisting. What are you talking arrest. about? Domestic assault, domestic battery, yep. and what? Is there like no chance that you can like decompress in the car for an hour or two, man? No. So unfortunately, right, state of Florida with domestic violence. I've never been like this. I've never had a girlfriend act like this before, so I've never. Well, I understand. Here's the conversation between her boyfriend and the police. A moment that reveals even more about her behavior. What unfolds next paints a clearer picture of her actions than words ever could. Uh, we have to do something with domestic violence. So the fact that she's sitting there hitting you in front of us and the way that she's acting. Kind of crazy, right? No, this is the most drunk I've ever seen her. I've never seen her like this in my what? life. What? We, we had a minor argument earlier because she has a daughter. She's 22 and she has a daughter. And so, and I'm telling her, you know, it's been six months. I'm like struggling, trying to grasp taking on someone else's kid. You know, I need her to kind of help me. You know, I'm doing everything for us to take care of her and yeah. her kid, and she lashes out like this t from time to time. But like when she's sober, she'll kind of get a little snappy. Okay. I mean, am I am I free to go inside at least, or what's going on here? The the truck here. What what's the story with that, real quick? How how did it end up where it's at? Trump has been here since since the get go. I just have a code on my door. No, th this is fresh right here. I've been driving in and out all day. Okay. Too. Show me. I pull in to the side and get out of the driveway. Still, we one charges on her. I took her and put her in my car. She's cuffed up. You can still? Yeah. Oh, absolutely, we can. Do y'all are y'all putting charges or anything on her? We we just got DV charges. So. I mean, that part's up to y'all. Whatever y'all want to do with that, but yeah, we can still do a DUI, hundred percent. Okay. Um, I mean, if she's chilling in the truck, keys are right there. Yeah, the keys are in the cup holder. Clearly drove here. She can't have anything right now. Yeah, I mean, clearly drove here. Just straight up. Yeah. How do I do this the last time? So, I guess I get to have anything else, She will have to go to first appearance. She's probably going to have a no contact order, which means she can't have any contact with you while the court is proceeding with this. So, does that mean I can still bail her out tomorrow? Or can someone bail her out tomorrow? Yes, somebody can. If the judge gives her a bond, so she cannot freeze in jail. So we didn't get her no, sir. Alia's feelings of abandonment and frustration echo the thoughts of many who find themselves in the legal system. She laments the lack of support for women in distress, but from a legal perspective, 
the officers were simply following protocol. Florida law doesn't bend based on emotions. It operates on the need to protect everyone involved. So, while Alia may feel dismissed, the reality is that the law is in place to prevent further harm. Please let me out! Hey, hey, hey! Wait. There are nobodies, you guys do nothing! I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to be mean, but like, hey, this man was nasty to hey. me and I just want to be let hey. out and hey. I'm being punished Listen. because y'all want to be nasty. Listen. That women better, get treated like around you. Better you better stop. Oh, when? You better oh. stop. Oh, am I such a threat to you? You know I'm not scaring you. I'm sad and I'm scared. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Uh. I'm not scaring you guys are scaring me, please. Stop. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. I, I just Due to your actions, this I don't is care about my actions. I'm this doing. is the consequences to your actions. Do you understand the no, fact I that I don't like, understand are, because you keep rambling. That's what I'm saying is because you're men. There are men in the world that we've tried to be understanding. And with. I'm willing. That's why I'm saying like I'm just willing to go with it. Have a seat. Have a seat. I was talking to someone. Well, you're not now. Have a seat. That's fine. Just take me to where I need to go and let me call my lawyer, please. Okay, well, I mean, you're going, but... So you don't want to talk to me now? Can I call my lawyer now? No, no, no. Um, yeah. She, signal one. Yeah, yeah, he'll do the DD. That works. Perfect. The police explain that Alyssa will be charged with domestic violence, as required by Florida law, due to the physical altercation. Her boyfriend seems just as confused as she is, but Florida's strict domestic violence statutes don't leave much room for interpretation. Once the police confirm any evidence of physical confrontation, they are obligated to make an arrest. Alyssa's behavior, while possibly fueled by alcohol and frustration, only made her legal situation worse. Go! Hey, hey! I I'm, keep telling you that you can take me where you want to take me! Listen to me. Alright, so here's the, the deal. You're being arrested Baby, for domestic violence. I will get into the middle of the car. I don't need it. Violence. I don't care. Okay. Well, Alright, here's the deal. Are you willing to provide me with a breath sample? For what? DUI. So why won't contact. you let me go inside if I'm, I'm at my a, home address? I'm drive. assuming that's a I have questions. I will okay. answer them and I will do what you want me to do. I gotta read you something. If you refuse to okay, test, so test, test it Okay, so we're gonna have, we're both gonna talk back and forth. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Are you talking with me or are you talking to me? Under 327.35215 for refusing to submit to a lawful test of you. You wanna give me a breath test? A breath sample? I sure as will if you tell me why. Because you're being arrested for DUI. Driving was I driving? Yeah, you were sitting in your driver's seat with your keys what right next to you. Okay, so do you want to give me a breath test? I honestly... Yes or no? I'm asking okay. you a question Additionally, as well, sir. If you refuse to take you don't test, get to I'll ask me a one-sided question. And and, hey! You don't get to talk in a one-sided argument. For refusal to submit to hey, a test, hey, hey, board, hey, you'll be hey, why are you talking to yourself? Refusal to submit to testing is admissible as evidence in any criminal smiling? proceeding. The testing will result in the loss of commercial what driving privilege for a period direction? of one year from today. Can if I call this is my your lawyer? second refusal, you'll be permanently Calling disqualified. Calling a lawyer from is the option. Thank you. All right. God bless. As expected, Alia's emotional roller coaster lands her with charges of domestic violence and DUI, with a bonus crying fit in the back of the police car. Look, it's hard not to feel for her at this point, but as much as we'd like to think tears can erase bad decisions, the law doesn't care about how many tissues you need. Once you're in that squad car, Waterworks won't get you out. It's not my fault. All I do is defend you. I defend you guys and I tell all my friends that you okay. I don't know why I do. If I'm being honest with you guys, all I do is defend you mother Yes, sir. I grew up around a group of people that hates you guys and all I did was defend you and I'm the one that's getting cut by these I people. I didn't see any damage what or anything to, to the car. I don't think it was a car wreck. And, it... and now I'm probably going to get put even more behind bars. Oh. Yeah. Like, do you not understand that, like, I had to beg my baby daddy to come see my child for 10 months and he's not going to see her for, like, three months. Like, she's going to be... Of 31 year old females been added in my link for you. As Alyssa is taken to jail, her emotions get the best of her, 
She cries, vomits, and expresses her despair about being separated from her child. It's a heart-wrenching moment, but one that highlights how a single bad decision can have a ripple effect on your entire life. Unfortunately, once the police have pressed charges, there's little room for sympathy. While Alyssa may have regretted her actions at that moment, it was too late to undo the legal consequences. Whiskey Foxtrot semi-cooperative. It's not very nice. You guys are not supposed to be my enemy. I feel like you guys are supposed to be like public. Like, okay. I don't want anyone to be talking. I literally sit here and I mind my own. I love you. threw up on herself just a heads up. I'm sorry. She domestically battered her partner in my presence. Alright, sit right there and relax. Alright, I'm just going to ask you a few questions. Okay? A few minutes later, the woman starts removing her clothes in the back seat, clearly in a hurry to use the restroom. It seems she's determined to make her situation as uncomfortable as possible. I'm turning this camera on because my 1015 is trying to undress in my back seat. I can't no, take you out on. because there's not a female deputy. I cannot take you to the bathroom. I'm take you to the bathroom and sit your ass outside. No, I, I'm, I'm not, not your baby. To you. I'm genuine. Please help me then. All I did to you was ask you to stop the man from hitting me. And now I'm sitting here in the back of the back seat. And 95 pound man was beating the sh out of me. And now I'm sitting here. When did that happen? What, 20 minutes ago, if even? No. What is the point of me sitting here? What is the point of you guys even existing? Why do you guys even exist if you call people and don't give a f What do you mean? You're just gonna keep me here for what, like 20 years? I'm not gonna do anything. I'm so confused. I didn't. All I did was tell these men that they're not supposed to treat women like this. And they said, who's gonna talk to me? And I said, there are people that will talk to me that will care. My aunt to Texas Rangers. What happens to women? Like we all just, if I passed away right now, I don't know what more you guys wanted from me. I did what I was supposed to do. So it's not supposed to be me? It's Here. not supposed to be mean. I'm actually asking you for validation. There's like a girl in your back seat. Like all I do is beg you guys to give a f All I do is beg all I f did. <laughs> like the whole job, like begging me to step in and like be a vouch for. I should just stay back in my own fucking business because at the end of the day, does the company give a fuck about me? No. What's that? Do you need a pee? I don't. Please, my 1015 might. Can you guys call my mom? Hello. Property? No, ma'am. I'll give you a chance to call your mom in a little she bit. She okay? also threw up on I herself. Please. I'm sorry. It's I just told you you're going to get on the phone and call your mom. Just relax. I'm, you guys are scaring me because I don't have any power in front of you guys. You guys are awful lying to each other you're in overall control of me please call my mom 386 in the case of alaya baker the consequences of her actions serve as a stark reminder of the fine line between emotional turmoil and legal repercussions charged with battery simple assault resisting an officer without violence and driving under the influence her story illustrates the dangers of letting emotions spiral out of control this case serves as a sobering reminder of how quickly things can spiral out of control, especially when emotions and alcohol are involved. So, what do you think? Was Alyssa treated fairly by the law, or did she deserve more understanding given her circumstances? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and remember, sometimes, staying calm and cooperative is the best defense when things get heated. Have you ever felt the frustration of waiting in line at the DMV? While it may push some to the brink of madness, one woman decided to take her grievances to a whole new level. I'm sorry, I don't know. Please don't touch me, please. Hey, I'm 14 years old, what's happening? Mine's happening, what's happening to you? On February 11th, 2023, the Lake County Sheriff in Florida responded to a call from a local department store reporting a petty theft in progress. Undercover agents met with the loss prevention staff, who had been monitoring two women as they filled a shopping cart with baby formula using sophisticated surveillance equipment. After confirming the shoplifting and identifying the suspect's appearance, the officers proceeded to the scene. 
And here is what happened next. Chandler, just go sit on the other side. 26. I'm sorry, I don't know. Please don't touch me, please. Hey, I'm talking to you, so don't touch me. Mine's hurting, what's happening to you? Please don't touch me. It's hurting, please. I'm talking to you, so. I'm talking to you, so then you make me like this. Come on, don't make me like that. What's happening to you? Leaving me like a dog. This is not correct. He's right here, right? Yes. Right. He's holding, he's holding me. Just keep, keep, keep walking. If you don't fall, he won't hurt you. Okay, what is she wearing? Black and white striped shirt. Okay, let them I'll put her inside and then I'll go back out there with them. Oh, we're going back out there with them. The officer then continued to use the description to search for the second female suspect inside the store. The two suspects were then brought together in an office with loss prevention staff and police officers to begin a more detailed investigation. Stay tuned to see the appalling attitudes of these suspects. She's wearing a long black and white uh, jacket down to her ankles. And leggings. Oh, come here. Yeah, come here. Let's go. What's up on? Let him know we got him. We have everything. We'll tell you everything that's happening. You're trying to steal from Walmart. What? You lost nothing with me. We what? lost it and you leave them the hands up down. Leave the hands on down. I have the like operation with the hands. So, Was she an accomplice to hiding everything? Um, they were working together because she's an accessory. Um, She's claiming that she's a minor. I don't know how true that is. Too bad. Minors <laughs> go to jail. Come to the LRC. There's an email for her already. Stand up. Who is she? Who is she? Stand up. Who is she? I don't know. You guys were on video together. Who is she? Hello, what's happening? I'm trying to help you out. Now calm down. Okay. Why don't you think I'm back here trying to help you out? I know. I'm, I'm scared because me, I, I don't touch nothing. Possible. Okay, everything out. You're not on the rest. You're being detained at this time. Look. We got all. <laughs> The second one in the long shirt helped conceal these items oh, underneath everything. They were um, together the whole time. She was being a lookout, hiding by the clothes, but they were together most of the time. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, thank you. As long as I, I was like, what's my shoes? She was wondering where. But ain't nothing yeah, ringing. I know I was running so hard because I, I saw them on the camera. I was like, oh shit, that's one of the ORC people. If she was helping her look out, spin her over we can't ID them, they both go to jail. Jane Doe's. Mm -hmm. ID cards? Do you have ID cards from the state of Florida? What language do you speak? What language? ID. Romanian. Romanian. Oh, we don't have it. I don't steal nothing. You take something sure. with me. Romanian, that's what. Drive to the parking lot, hitting the panic button, see what car comes back to them. While the officers interrogated the suspects, Another officer headed to the parking lot to locate their vehicle. Why do you think they marked the car instead of searching it right away? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and keep watching to find out if your theory matches the actual events as the investigation progresses. What kind of vehicle am I looking for? <coughs> the key fob is just a Toyota. Nothing up these two rows. Looking for a car. Yeah. No, I'm literally like on row five now. I've hidden, I've bro, I'm hitting the lock button. I'm starting to wonder if this key fob even works. I think I found it. All right. I want to see if there's All right. I found it. So don't open the door. All right. I don't know why I thought that flashlight would work. Said the hood, handlebars. I'll make an X across the hood. What did you do? You said across the hood. <laughs> I'm gonna make an X. All right, so then tell me, how should I do it? Just do it here. The suspects claimed innocence, insisting that they had no connection to each other despite evidence to the contrary. 
Both suspects communicated in Romanian and claimed not to speak English well. In the footage provided by loss prevention staff, we can see that both individuals were involved in concealing stolen items and working together, with one acting as a lookout. They appear to be organized thieves operating as part of a systematic group, treating shoplifting as a legitimate job. Do you think so? You know, it's funny, she did ask the other store and she said, I don't know English, so then she ran off with the car. Who do you see me? At the other store. No one at the store. It's fine, I got a good picture. Hey, let's not even waste our time trying to talk to them. Because they're okay. So they've been doing this? Yeah. I'm really sorry, my hand is hurt. A little okay. bit like this. You're fine. Cops are uncomfortable. They're supposed to be uncomfortable. Face money me. I don't speak Romanian, you can curse me out all you want. If we don't know who you guys are and you have no ID, you're gonna get booked into jail, and until we can identify you, you're gonna stay there. Uh, same shoes, same hair, same build. What was that at? I got $1,600 in that one. Oh, that's on the, you want me to CC you in it or forward it to you? Dude, people have been killing us in the formulas, bro. Two other groups have been doing it. They've been stealing like crazy formulas, bro. It's nuts. Did you what was the formula? Is it on Marketplace? Yeah, because they keep getting stolen. Mm -hmm. How far out to the store did they get? She was in the store. Yeah, once she saw me stop her, the other one, they were walking out together? No, they were, she was standing behind, like 10 feet behind, so that way she, she was, I no, she was like 10 feet behind that Excuse one, so me. that way she could keep an eye to see Excuse if anybody me. watching her. You see something phone. with me? I do have nothing, I was doing nothing. How old are you? Two teeth, where's your mom? Hmm? Where's your parents? It's home. In Romania? No. Contributing to the language of the minor. How old are you? How old are you? From whatever fake names they give you. Because we know it's not going to be legit. When attempting to identify the suspects, officers faced difficulties as the suspects displayed uncooperative attitudes and provided conflicting statements about their names and ages. They seem to be trying to stall for time. Do you notice that? What is your name? I don't know how to spell it. I can't write it. You don't know what your name is? I know what my name is. Well, say it. And you don't know how to spell it. What was your last name? Corey. I don't know to spell it. Okay, I was, I was also going to say you check your email. She doesn't know how to spell it. She can write it. Stand up. 4365. Stand up. It's the same. Yeah. Pretty sophisticated for a 15 year old to uh, steal a bunch of formula. Yeah. Don't move. Don't move. I got you. Okay. It's not in my hands. Well, they're going back on, so. Here, write your name. Write your name. Where I can read it. And your date of birth. Is these yours? No, these aren't mine. Is that another photo from somewhere else? Uh, well, this was a terrorist store down the street, but she said that I think one of these were them. I can't say. That's hard. So How old is your baby? I think, I think she, she looks skinnier, though. Yeah. How old is your baby? Four months old? Six years old? That's right. It's almost the same jacket. Oh. I don't know. It's a safe style of clothing. It's a long jacket, the le workout leggings. I'm trying to murder you. I'm letting you murder you. That's why I was getting so pissed. I'm trying to murder you in those days. Like this? Let's make sure we like take this? a picture of all of it, please. That's what I don't like. know. It's hurting. Yeah, Handcuffs on. Yeah, it's not hurting. You make it normally, but not so fast. There's, there's not normal, the tank of... It's no. making it too fast. No, it's not too fast. That's all it's supposed to be. They're not made for comfort, man. I know it's not made for comfort, but not so hard. No, they're, like they're metal they or... Your wrists aren't used to being in handcuffs. Hey, what's your name? I can't spell No. You don't know how to spell either? 25 years old, 15 years old, we don't know how to spell our names? Stand up. Do you have mom's phone number? I have a phone number. For mom? Well, we need mom and dad. Your name. Which one's your name, phone? Date of birth. This one. We need to call. We need a. We need a number for mom, or somebody can get a hold of mom. My brother. Okay. So how do I get to his phone number? Okay, get the in the phones. Yes. I don't know how to use this phone. How old is your brother? He's seventeen. Which one's your brother? Uh, that one. Yeah. You have your brother with kissy face? I don't think so. Good. Yes. Good try. Gee, that is, is my she brother. kisses her brother. Oh, she's got kissy lips on her brother. Yeah, and what is this? Well, it's no, just no. emojis. I can't put what emojis well, I want. You put emoji, kissy emojis yeah. with your brother and sister? I mean, oh, it's laughing. Maybe that's their culture. And then a romantically involved <laughs> photo of your brother on your phone? <laughs> no, 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 no. See, it's just a phone, right? I don't know. I guess. 15765. Mm -hmm. Laxnia is your last name? Say your last name. 
No, but it's hard. I use but I can't make like this. It's normal to make it. Like That's how you're going to jail. It takes an hour to get to jail. The police recovered a large amount of stolen merchandise, including infant formula from the suspects and their vehicles. The stolen items amounted to over $2,000 in value, including approximately 504 cans of infant formula found in the suspect's truck. Hey. Their van has about another 50 formula cans. How much of those cans of formula? Yeah, bring it back here. Like $29.97 probably each. Uh, Pretty seal it, tow it if you're using the commission of a felony. $1,500. Are you the driver of that van? You're driving the car? <laughs> you are. You know the <laughs> keys It's not in your name. Who's, whose name is they it? They were together. Both of you listen to this. You have the right to remain silent. Do you understand each of these rights I explained to you? Yes. You don't understand English. I don't understand what you don't understand. You don't know, what's what? Just over $2,000. Oh, nice. We're towing the car and getting a search warrant with CIB. I haven't seen that date or that so, email. They're both going to jail. We'll call DCF to come get her from the jail. Once they run her fingerprints through the jail, because if she doesn't come back with anything, we'll have to call DCF and DCF will take custody of her until somebody can claim her or somebody can provide some type okay, of identity. Maybe DCF will take She wants to play this on 15 year old game and I can't give you my mom's phone number. I'm going to give you my boyfriend instead. Yeah. I don't believe you don't have a number for your mom. What's the address for your mom? Where'd you pick her up from? Where did you pick her up from? No? Uh, let's play the double one again. Kissy face. This one. Kissy face, this one's hers. Kissy face, last game. Due to the suspects lacking identification documents and providing conflicting information, they were temporarily detained. Plans were set in motion to contact the Department of Children and Families, DCF, to determine guardianship rights for the juveniles until their identities could be verified. Car keys are staying with us. No, you're not getting anything out of your car. Uh, I can make sure you have no weapons stuck anywhere. I don't want nothing. You scared I'm killing you? Can I have my phone? No, you don't get your phone. Absolutely not. That's not how this works. Although charges have not yet been filed against these two individuals, one thing is certain. They will be added to the store's blacklist and banned from entering the premises again. What do you think will be the charges once their identities and basic information are confirmed? Share your thoughts in the comments below the video to discuss further. I think you have more than a flat tire. You have no tires at all. This tire already was like having an issue, so I already knew that. Okay. When a car with no tire rolls down the road and the smell of alcohol lingers in the air, the story quickly shifts from a traffic incident to a serious arrest due to the driver's irresponsibility. I'm sorry, I don't remember what you said. That's right. On April 10th, 2024, Officer Voigt was on patrol when he spotted a black 2018 Nissan Altima with severe front-end damage and driving without a tire, making a loud scraping noise against the pavement. He immediately realized that this vehicle was connected to a previously reported traffic accident. With the help and observation of bystanders, he located the vehicle parked near Hill Street. Driving a car in such a dangerous condition not only puts the driver at risk, but also endangers the safety of others around them. According to the law, operating an unsafe vehicle can lead to severe penalties. Pull me out with a 1012 vehicle. East Buckingham and the Pike. I got a New Jersey registration when you're ready. Hotel 13 Sierra X-ray uniform. The officer immediately approached the driver, who was later identified as Carissa. After waking the woman who had fallen asleep in the car, the officer began to follow the standard procedures for a traffic stop professionally. However, the investigation faced challenges from the very beginning as the female driver repeatedly denied the officer's statements, followed by an elaborate performance recounting her supposedly tragic past. From her story, we are bound to uncover many interesting details. Roll the window down. Are you okay? Yeah, no, what? I'm okay. What's what's going on? I'm to figure out where I'm going and what I'm doing. I'm figuring out my situation, so okay, I'm well, we'll talk to me. And I found a tire of yours in the middle of the pike. 
And then I my saw you fly is, by me. My car only has three what things. You, okay. So I'm waiting for someone to come pick me up. I fly. I understand. So Where are you coming from, man? Um, yeah. Barrington. Okay. And to an accident. At. So my accident happened like three weeks ago. Three I'm, weeks ago? Yeah. So you've been driving it like this for three weeks? Where did and you get the flight at? Do you I remember? Have no idea. No idea? No. Okay. <laughs> The courthouse, they have me on there mm -hmm. for everything going on with my children. Oh, okay. Um, and she's not doing the right thing, so I'm fighting with them, and they... Oh, uh, okay. So. Um, how did you end up here? Um, I'm just through my old boss's house. I'm trying to get there, uh -huh. but... My... Where does he live? Your old boss. Dirty Barrington. How do you feel? But my car. <laughs> do you have the keys for the car? I do. Can I see them? Are you sure I can? I'm just gonna hang. The woman driver explained that she had been at court dealing with a family issue and was on her way to her boss's house. She claimed that the car had been damaged in an accident a few weeks ago. However, the officer smelled alcohol and suspected she was driving under the influence. This made the situation more complicated, as her explanation didn't match what the officer was observing. Denying drinking while clear evidence suggests otherwise can worsen her legal situation, and this action shows a lack of honesty, a factor that will influence the officer's decision in handling the case. Do you have um your ID on you? Yes, I do. You want to grab that for me? I'm gonna do anything wrong. I, they will tell you that I've been. They will tell you. Are you the registered owner of the vehicle? I sure am. Okay. I didn't do anything wrong. My car is registered. Everything is done. Okay. I literally just came from the police station in Magnolia. They have a whole police report. Because my children's father didn't hit me and he mentally abused me, that they couldn't do anything for me. Oh, uh, Okay. Well, what that's where I am. in Magnolia am. or anything? I'm just trying to figure out yep. what's going on here. That's fine. In my car, and my car has a flat tire. I'm so aggravated. Um, it's not even funny. I think you have more than a flat tire at all on both sides. How intoxicated must this woman have been to not realize her car was missing two tires? She drove a long distance with only two functioning tires, and when the officer mentioned it, she was utterly shocked. Do you think Carissa was intentionally putting on a show for the officer? Was she trying to prove her innocence with that expression? This is everything to do with him. Okay, hold on one second. The officer noted that her car was missing tires on both sides, but the woman continued to blame previous incidents. She became emotional and shared personal issues, including being a victim of abuse and having a restraining order. While these are significant concerns that may have influenced her actions, they do not excuse the fact that she was operating an unsafe vehicle and potentially violating DUI. Driving a severely damaged vehicle not only violates the law, but it also reflects Corissa's disregard for legal regulations. This behavior poses a potential threat to her own life as well as the lives of others on the road. You probably just took it. I was just, so I was at um, Magnolia Courthouse all day. Did you go after that? Literally, I just went to my girlfriend's house and then I left it. So this tire already was like having an issue, so I already knew that. Okay. This tire? When you were at your girlfriend's house, did you have anything to drink over there? No. Can't even I... stay there. Okay. <laughs> they smell a strong odor of alcohol is why I'm asking. You can breathalyze me if you don't need to. I don't have anything. Okay. Do you have a registration for the yes. vehicle? Yes. What was that in the glove compartment? That's from when me and my ex got. Okay. Can you do me a favor and just step out here? Mm -hmm. Just hang tight up here. I'm just going to make sure. Okay. 
he's not so long. And then I'm going to check to make sure we don't have any hit and runs around here. And then uh, sure I'll, uh, I'll be right back. Wait too, just in case car comes. Yeah, sure you're taking off. Yeah, we're just being bruised. We're turning off Walnut, left on Hawk. Big speeds are around 50. So where are you coming from? Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Where are you coming from? Um, I, so I'm from Magnolia, I went to Magnolia Place, my significant other that was previous filed something against me, we got into an altercation, training order, and that's where I am. Okay. Do you live in Magnolia? Or? I do. Okay. What brings you here? And I didn't realize that my, I'm literally in disbelief about my she probably did that. So, you're heading to Clementon? No, I'm actually heading that tonight I'm going to be staying in, I guess it's Haddonfield. Haddonfield? Yeah. But I'm like, yeah, I believe you this isn't yeah, just... Is that where you're headed now is Haddonfield or? Yeah. Yeah. But this isn't just a whole different story. How long ago were you at Magnolia? I Peter. lived there for... No, how long are you... Yeah, I was at the place. Before. How long ago? Six o'clock tonight. About six o'clock. Where'd you go after that? I traveled to my girlfriend's house, which is where. So what's going on in Magnolia? So I live in Magnolia. I I tried to file a restraining order against my children's father. Okay. They. Yeah, you're going through a lot. I understand. So. Meanwhile, like I come out sweating, and now I come out and both tires are like that. It's just like aggravating. Well, I saw you driving by me at a high rate fourth it's, Ave. It's because I was trying to get off of this. I don't know what's going on. I can leave. I'm not going to be able to drive the car. Because no, it's definitely not, not driving. I'm going to get someone to come pick me up. But it wasn't. <clears throat> Do you remember what you hit? And where? So I was turning the car, like hit the corner. Where at? Um, like two blocks down. Two blocks down? Yeah. I'm familiar with this area. Okay. I just was trying Did you, um... Well, absolutely not. Just the curb. <laughs> uh, I don't think a curb's gonna do this that. This isn't from this. My car was from it. Okay. When was your police report reported? Uh, 3 March. I have our police report. They came out. They checked my vehicle. The cops came. The whole nine. Mm-hmm. Like been driving your car like this for yeah. weeks. Yeah. What about the tires? No. Okay. After realizing that the police did not believe her story, the woman became increasingly agitated and repeated her troubled relationship history as a form of sympathy that she felt everyone should recognize. It seemed she was trying to play the victim and portray herself as innocent, shifting all the blame onto her ex-husband. Very abusive relationship. I, know, I and understand. I'm to, I understand. Like, I heard I you're coming from Magnolia. With a but lawyer fought with someone over mm -hmm. what I'm gonna do, and I don't know what to do. So I'm trying to do the best I can. Okay. I'm sorry. Don't want to drive this. I won't you, drive it. You're, you're not Obviously, gonna be driving this. I you, you can't. That. I get that, but like I'm not doing anything wrong mm -hmm. either. <laughs> like it wasn't up to me. <laughs> I'm going off of what I'm. Being told to go off of. I what were you told to do? And they were like, "Oh, you should go file a restraining order. You should do this. You should do that." And then get what the police say. They say to me, "Oh, well, you shouldn't. You're, you're, you weren't hit yesterday." So, so then I talked to them and mm -hmm. I told them what was going on, and they still used it against me. Okay. Me drinking all day, and I said that to them. I said, "Please." Go in my car, check everything, do literally everything. What time was this in Magnolia? Four o'clock today. Okay. Get in. So first of all, I had to get this, it out of the roadway. This isn't from today. This is from one of the tires. On March. Okay. So I hit a car in front of me. 
To determine the appropriate course of action, the officers asked the female suspect to perform field sobriety tests, including the horizontal gaze nystagmus HGN, test, walking a straight line, and standing on one leg. However, she was unable to complete these tests convincingly. This further reinforced the officer's suspicion that she might be driving under the influence of alcohol. Failing these tests is often a key factor in making DUI charges under U.S. law. We're gonna do a couple tests and all that. All right, I'm just making sure. Not a belt It's a belt that like. Okay. Yes. I'll do whatever test you need. Me to do. Okay. What's your highest level of education? I graduated high school and then I went to college and I'm all C on my belt to get it. Okay. So I see you have an ID there. What's that for? I work. About to get my C A D C. All right. You're gonna do everything, but I'm gonna. I'll do the H G N okay. for you. All right. Um. So I'm gonna ask you real quick. Do you wear glasses? Yes, I do wear glasses, but I'm not prescribed. <laughs> okay, all right. So what what we're gonna do is call, yeah. sorry, I'm gonna test your eyes to see how they react to movement, all right? Yeah. So what I'm gonna have you do is stand with your feet together, just like this, right? All right. You're gonna keep your head still, all right? Okay. I'm gonna move my pen. Okay, the tip yeah. of my pen, you can see the tip of my pen, right? Yep. You're gonna keep your eye, move your head, you're only gonna move your eyes. Yep. Okay? So you're gonna keep the test is done, yeah. right? Do not move your head, do you understand? Yes. Okay, good. See the tip of my pen, correct? I do. Okay. Sorry, I feel like I'm concentrating too much, but no, yes, you're good. I Just understand. Keep watching the tip, you're yep. good. Keep your eyes to the tip of the pen, right? I'm gonna go up now. All right, Get relax. He's gonna do the rest of them for you. So there's your directions on the back. You don't need the pen. Okay. There's a walk and turn test. I'm gonna demonstrate and read you the instructions first before we begin, okay? Can you just put your feet together and hands down by your side? Thank you. <clears throat> your right foot on the line ahead of your left foot with the heel of your right foot against the toe of your... Don't begin okay. until he tells you to begin now, all right? So put your feet back together and your hands at your sides. Do so. All right, do you understand? <clears throat> when I tell you to begin, take nine and take nine heel-to-toe steps back on the line, okay? So I'm going to demonstrate. I'm going to take nine heel-to-toe steps. You can count out loud to nine. And then once you get to nine, and then you're gonna go heel to toe back. Okay. And you can count out loud yep. while you're doing so. Keep your hands down by your side. Do you have any questions? When you okay. get to the end, that front foot, right? You're not gonna you're not gonna move your front foot. So it's just like this, right? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. You keep your foot planted, right? You're gonna turn like this. And you're gonna bend. Mm -hmm. Can you just tell me when I have to switch? That's all. <laughs> so you're going to count to nine. Okay. And yeah, that's, that's when you, when you turn, turn and keep to your take nine steps around. back. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> like, not okay. One, two, it's number five, six, seven, eight, nine. Stand test. <clears throat> Stand with your feet together and your arms down by your side. When I tell you to, I want you to raise one leg, either one, yeah. approximately six inches out in front of you like this. Okay. okay? And then you're going to count out loud. One, one thousand, two. two. Not until I tell you to start. <clears throat> so count them out loud while you do. All right, whenever you're comfortable, you can begin. When you put your foot up, so when you're the ground, oh. okay? Do not point your toe up. You're not putting it down. Oh, you're keeping okay. it parallel to the ground. One, you're two. Gonna keep, oh, not yet, on. not yet. Not until we tell you to start. You're going to keep your foot parallel, and you're going to look, look, stare at your toe. All right? You're going to stare at your front toe. All right, take a minute. 
you just have no idea what I've been through. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, no. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, ten Mississippi, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. After failing the tests, the woman was handcuffed and escorted to the back of the police car. All right, do me a favor, turn around, put your hands behind your back. Audio and video recorded. Like your handbag. No. Okay. Do you have anything? Do you have any pockets? No. Yeah. Okay. We're going to see you check before, during, and after every shift. Is there anything back there? Her vehicle was searched immediately after the arrest, and the police found four open containers of alcohol. During this process, the responding officer also briefed his colleagues on how he found the suspect, including the fact that she had been involved in an accident before he located her. Once you open the glove compartment, there are some MPs. Some pink Whitney shooters? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it looked like. Yes. Yep, pink Whitney shooters. Alright. <clears throat> I gotta figure out what to street from Wawa. She came. Received it. Tab real quick. I tried to get behind her, but I couldn't. And she parked up somewhere. Was driving on the rim? I heard, no, I don't think she was driving on. So then I went down 4th Ave trying to find her, and I couldn't. Circle back around, came out, and I saw the tire was in the middle of the pike going the other side of the road. And the dude's like, oh, that the lady driving that car is down on Buckingham. I'm like, all right. So I moved the tire. She was just slumped over, like sleeping. Yeah. Here's that. Might have a little. There's more pink with me. It's this confusing. Uh, there's the empties that were in here that you saw. They're yeah. on the trunk. Just take a picture of them. Okay. We can discard them. Do you have a cell phone? Would have been in the car. Well, what's it look like? Well, I couldn't find one, so I'm trying to find one for you before we tow the car. <laughs> he did all. <laughs> it's. I don't even. Uh, is it an iPhone, Android? It's an iPhone. Okay, what color keys? Um, it has like a rose gold. Rose gold. Key. Okay. Should be in here. Where it is? No, nah, she said it's rose gold. Where's your car keys? Too? I have them. No, uh, I got it. Down in the seat. Must have.
That's good enough. I found your phone. It was down underneath the seat. After discussing the charges deemed appropriate for Carissa, the officer returned to the car to transport the suspect to the Audubon Police Department for further processing. Meanwhile, another officer stayed with the vehicle until it was towed for mandatory impoundment for 12 hours, as required by John's law. Yeah, they said it was good. Alright, I'm gonna print out the uh, 450 real quick. Not the right of that. You, gotta do, you still gotta do 20 minute observation. <laughs> you gotta anyway, do 20 minute so. observation the whole night anyway, and, well, not you, but one of us just put e ticket. Okay. Because then you can sit down and write whatever summons you need from. But yeah, they said they're uh, recycling these out, so. Yeah, I'll take care of it. Alright, we're not going too far. Yeah, who wants them? Just insurance. Thanks, Rich. You have it? You should take it. Because I'm sure we're going to get a call for a hit and run. Alright, you coming? Yeah. Alright. One female under. I'll be transporting her to District 1's headquarters. I got starting miles when you're ready. Step on out for me. How do you say your first name? How do you pronounce your first name? Step. Okay. Step over here with me, Chris. You go straight up that ramp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll take them all. Two more. At the Audubon Police Department, the officer read the standard statement for motor vehicle operators to her, and she agreed to provide a breath sample. Another officer operated the machine, and her alkadist result showed a blood alcohol concentration of 0.18% more than double the legal limit of 0.08%. Carissa was then taken to the Mount Ephraim Police Department for further processing. After being processed, she was released to her boyfriend while awaiting her court date, after he signed a potential responsibility notice on her behalf. She was charged with driving while intoxicated, DWI, reckless driving, driving without a license, operating an unregistered vehicle, open container violations, and unsafe tires. On May 25, 2024, Carissa was arrested again for driving under the influence in Berkeley Township, New Jersey. When found, she was unconscious, slumped over the steering wheel of a black 2018 Nissan Sentra. As of July 11, 2024, both cases are still pending in court. Perhaps this woman should be sent to a rehab facility or detained for a long enough period to reflect on her actions. Simply issuing fines and releasing her to her boyfriend may not prevent future violations. And there's no guarantee that other road users won't suffer due to Corissa's irresponsibility. It's a tremendous risk to the community if this woman, struggling with alcohol addiction, continues to roam freely. What do you think? Share your thoughts on this situation with us. Thank you for tuning in. Today's story serves as a reminder that feeling entitled can lead to serious misunderstandings about the law and personal responsibility. Actions driven by a sense of privilege can have unintended consequences, impacting not only ourselves but those around us. It's essential to recognize that our choices matter, and respecting authority is a cornerstone of a functioning society. If you found value in today's discussion, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more insightful content. Have a wonderful day ahead, and stay safe.